Good morning, this is Julia from the Garden of Feeding. And today I'd like to talk to you about where we started on this journey of raising chickens here in North Central Florida. We started back in 2013 when we were missionaries going back and forth to Haiti. We were living on a mission compound and staying there during our off times of going to Haiti. And so my job while staying on this little compound was to take care of the chickens. Now, this gentleman that I took care of the chickens for, they had a much better coop than we do. Our coops are portable. We created them to be portable because we weren't sure exactly how long we were going to be on this property that we are renting. So we were given this coop. I want to show this to you. It's getting dilapidated now. It's been here for two years. And it was red when we first got it. And this is the color it was. And this is where my chickens have started laying their eggs now. They, they come to this coop. This is my storage bin, which I'll be cutting up here soon. And so this is where this container here is a plastic little rectangular container that we nailed inside of this little area. And this is where the chickens sit and lay their eggs. And then the speckled Sussex stay in this area at night. So we were given this nice little coop and I painted it blue. That was two years ago. And that was when we first started. When we first started, we had a dream of selling um, purebred black copper moron chickens. We wanted French black copper moron and we didn't really know the difference between the French copper marons and the black copper marons. So the only ones we could find two years ago when we were searching for black copper marons were in a town called Live Oak at a little teeny hidden farm out there. And we got our first 12 black copper marons. Here's a Black Copper Moran. See how pretty he is? When we first got the little Black Copper Moran chicks, they were straight run. They were straight run chicks. So when they grew up and they got older, it turned out we had nine roosters. And one of the chicks passed away before, that was before the nine roosters. One of the 12 actually that we ordered passed away, so we only had a couple of hens and nine roosters. Well, I sold one of the roosters, and we actually processed the rest of them, except I kept one to uh, fertilize the others so we could start our little chicken farm. And we did. We started, and we started raising some little baby chickens, and then I realized that, hey, there's other chickens out there. There's buffs. Buff Orpingtons. And so uh, this is one of my older buffs. She's turned white when she molded the second time around. Her molding came in white, her molded feathers, and these are new younger buffs. And so what we did was we had this little tiny coop, and it didn't have the run. This was donated to us, to our little dream, and we started out small. Then what we did was we added this run that you see here. I've got it covered with black paper. Um, eventually, all of this is gonna to be torn down. And I'll show you the coops that were, we started. We wanted to not put a lot of money into our farm, but let the chickens pay for it. So basically they've, paid for it with their eggs and with us selling a few of them they've paid a lot and we since we decided to make this whole process 
inexpensively as possible. What we've done is we started using PVC pipes. And of course, Rick started out building our little brooders. Now this run right here, we added to the coop and connected the little door down there, which I have blocked right now. And now I have in this run, my roosters that we will process. There's three of them there. They're gonna go for processing. So we had too many buffs. And then we added these two because when you first start your chickens, you have them in a, a little brooder and then you gradually introduce them if you're gonna have them outside. We introduced them and the out to the outside by creating these pins. There's two pins actually, and now we've hooked them together. So we had two different brooders. So that was our second thing that we did was create places to put the chicks as they're processed up to become teenagers. Then we added this coop right here. This is the first big coop that we built and there's the nest box and you can see the uh, the area here that we created and we just tried to make it as simply as possible but you see we used a lot of wood and wood has gone up so high in price that we backed off from wood and we covered the whole thing with the tarp because we thought that we were going to be moving right away which didn't happen and so then the next thing we added was this piece right here this is a process and this is where i'm housing my black copper marons buff orpington and a well summer in here there's a big well summer and this is our plymouth bard rock rooster which he's in here temporarily until the girls catch up with him and our their eggs are larger right now they're they haven't started laying yet but they're due to lay any day now <clears throat> excuse me then we the next thing we did was we added this coop down here <clears throat> i've been talking a lot I'm getting hoarse here and this was rick's coop that he created my husband rick and we put the little nest box there and guess where they lay the eggs? See there? In the tire. The eggs are laid by all of my chickens just about in this tire. And there's a little broody house, which none of them have used yet. And they're a roost made out of materials. <coughs> and you can see that we used hardware cloth and chicken wire and we use these stretchy cords and we use zip ties because we can cut them right off and take this coop down whenever we do decide to move. And then the next thing we did was we created this coop and, and we created four of them. It's gonna give me an issue now that I'm trying to talk to you about it. Let me just go through here. And so we created four of these coops and we have a lot of chicken wire because out here where we live we have not had any problem with predators at all there's i live with uh in a subdivision with large houses all around me they all have dogs except for me i think i'm the only one that doesn't have a dog and most of their properties are fenced so we created this scenario which happens to be our best scenario right now and we plans is to tear down that old section right there and this one and just make it all the way across coops for all of them we need to build a maternity coop these are our lavender americanas which i do not let free range and they are close to laying We've got a couple of them starting to lay. And so that's the plans of this Garden of Feeding 
I hope you've enjoyed this part of my journey. And I'll show you a better picture when I get all of this cleaned up here. I usually pull all the tarps off except for on the roof. And I lighten up the lavender coop as much as I can during the day. So they can get lots of light. The main thing you want to know about coops, if you're trying to go as cheaply as possible, PVC, the smaller pipes can run as low as $2 a pipe. And so uh, they're very helpful. The tarps, we get at a regular, you can get them at Walmart. And zip ties. Uh, so it's an inexpensive way for us to have our little farm be sure and subscribe to my channel and I have a lot of stories to tell you. You will be amazed at what has gone on here. Thank you very much for watching. God bless you.